all down it. Because it's like, you know, when, when we make it, we're going to be rich, we're going to be millionaires, we're going to be billionaires. And as much as that could be a possibility, uh, it's a 90-10 kind of ratio. 90% chance you fail, 10% chance you succeed. The tech community in Kenya is expanding. Almost every day there's an event with the youth looking for a job opportunity and others getting their projects funded. At what point do you know this is what I need to follow, this is what I need to pursue? Is it relevant to the current world? Or you can be very specialized in one topic and go very deep in it. And I think um, the people who um, find out which aspect of depth they want to go to are extremely lucky. But for all of us, in the roles we play in teams, especially like in your day-to-day -day job, picking one thing that you can be very deep in and you know block yourself and not need to look outside it, it's very, very rare. Like you must be, you know, somebody who's very experienced in a very specific segment of technology that you know literally everything about. But working in a team setting, you're required to be different things in different like scenarios. So at some point, you're the problem solver, at some point you're the person writing the documentation, at some point you're the person who's really going deep into making other people in the team understand the technology that's being built. And so I do think that tech provides a playing field for people who are just generalists, right? Africa has a rising number of techies, but most don't even know how to get these jobs. This particular event was an eye-opener and to the skilled and lucky ones, like a Kenyan president said. Finya laptop, no lie, okay. Actually, I was looking for jobs, and then I'm looking at and seeing this product designer, so I'm like, what are these things? <laughs> and then that's when I'm starting to research, and this is four years down the line. You can imagine if I had known this when I was still in third year, when I was trying to figure things out, how much ahead I would have been. So I would just say, do that research. Unfortunately, our current education system won't give you that much exposure. So, good thing for you, you are attending this kind of events. I never used to, as young people talk, uh, and I'm telling us that Jay makes sense on campus. <laughs> <laughs> Even though She Code is an initiative focused on women, that didn't stop men from showing up, from speakers to the normal attendees. Uh, Shikot Africa is a tech community that supports women in the tech ecosystem. We provide mentorship, link them up to mentors, link them up to opportunities, and provide them any support that they need to grow their careers. Yeah, that is what we do in a nutshell. The event's earlier key speaker was Ben Roberts. I would never say make a career plan, because um, if I was to say that, I still haven't got my own career plan. I don't think I know what I want to do yet. Um, but um, but you do need to set goals. You need to say where where do I want to be? What do I want? To, what areas of technology do I want to be working in? And, and then the importance of this concept of pathways is is very important because one thing that if you try and make a plan, and the reason I'm saying don't make a plan is because if you make a plan of your career, then the first thing I'll tell you is the plan isn't going to go to the plan. Right? Um, you you need you rely upon other things. You rely upon passing exams, you're relying upon uh, being in the right place at the right time, getting the right job, being recognized, um, getting the promotions you need, learning the new things. Um, so if you set goals, you can set pathways. You can say, this is where I want to be, and then here's one way of going here, but here's another way of going here, and, and, and try and find the different ways of um, achieving what you want to achieve. On the next session, there was a panel about navigating tech career opportunities where speakers working in international tech companies share their thoughts. Tech is very, very broad. You know, tech is not just the folks who are writing code and the prefects of coders <laughs> and everyone in between, you know. Um, it goes beyond, you know, um, there is, okay, as much as cloud engineering is still part of that space, but it's something that it's only recently that we've seen new folks who are graduating start to gain an interest in it. If you actually look at the current market right now in terms of cloud engineers, a good percentage of them are actually from Safaricom, right? Because you know that's those companies that really invested in cloud and such when they were sellers for AWS and everything else. But then now AWS themselves are coming in and they're like, oh, we need our own cloud engineers. And what's the first thing that they do? They first go and knock at Safaricom's door. They're like, yo, we need our people, you know, these guys that are trained in AWS and everything. We need to steal them a bit. And I like that because what will happen is 
like the ladies that we have here who are still in school, those still in uni, it's creating new opportunities for you to realize that, hey, there's this very huge gap. And as much as I'm saying we need to stay away from the software engineering just as that thing tech, the truth is there's also still a very huge gap in software engineering. But the beauty of it is that we've seen a good uptake of guys that's trying to come in to write code and everything. But what I would try to encourage everyone is try to think beyond writing that code. What else is there in tech? Literally, what is stopping you from working for SpaceX? There's really nothing. The world is a, is a global village right now. As much as you you can learn, it also means the same the same things you're learning online creates the same opportunities for you. So you could be at a slight disadvantage based on your location. We've had those stories over and over again. But I would say the bad stops with you. You know, get to understand what form is within the tech space. When it comes to internet itself, connectivity in general, you know, what the likes of Liquid Tech are now doing. There's more than just putting a cable here and there. You know, a, a few years back, uh, 30, 40 years back, tech guys were what wale wa IT wa could start computers or to go busy. You know, that's the tech guy. Right now people are writing code, building software. So you, you can see how things are graduating and becoming more complex. So right now we are here. We are the ones probably writing code or written, we've written code we in one way or the other. But now for you, you need to go beyond that. When you're thinking about AI, think about it from how do you actually build the language models themselves? It's not just about training the models, building the models themselves. That's what we need to see. One of the topics covered was mentorship, starting from how do you find a mentor to how do you build the relationship. Mentorships have to be extremely deliberate, right? When you're approaching a mentor, um, know, um, know about the mentor and know specifically what about their career you want to learn about or wh wh the specifics of who they are and what you like, what you want to emulate. For example, as she say, your, you know, your mom can be your mentor and it could be more of like how she conducts herself. So you can have unlimited number of mentors. I have like four mentors who I look at for like different things. So there's people who would mentor me in terms of like how they, you know, their values and how they live life and stuff. And then I have like a technical mentor who I can really just talk to about, okay, I'm going through this thing in product and like, let's talk through it and problem solve. But to set up a good mentorship, you need to know what outcomes there are for you. You need to know how much time you want to request for that from that mentor. So like just going on someone's LinkedIn and being like, hey, looking for a mentor, mentor me, that's not really, you know, enough to tell us, okay, like, how is this situation supposed to work out? So a great way to approach someone is to say, like, hey, I've identified this specific area of your career, and I'm looking to transition from X to Y. This is where I'm at, and I'd love to know more about X, Y, Z. That's a great pitch. That's something that we can, you know, jump on a WhatsApp call and have a 20-minute conversation about. And then you get to also determine how frequently you want to interact with that mentor. It doesn't have to be like religious and church like we have to meet every Sunday. It can be like, hey, you're my mentor when I need you. Are you okay with that situation? And then also be considerate of the mentor's um, schedule and like be flexible about how those interactions look like. And I'd also say tech doesn't exist in a bubble that is say, away from society, right? Like in tech, you do need to have your boundaries in terms of maintaining a professional relationship with your mentors. If it's somebody who you're sharing a lot of like your information with, um, just know that you have to put in place like specific boundaries for yourself. Like right? I have a mentor, but I don't discuss things outside this scope. Your mentor is not your therapist. Your mentor is not your priest. They're not your pastor. So have already defined the boundaries for how you want that engagement to look like. Because, yeah, you know, some certain lines can be crossed. It can become a very, you know, toxic kind of relationship. So treat mentorship like any other personal relationship in your life. Have your own boundaries and have your own um, definition of how you want that relationship to be. It's mutual. And um, they, they, they get something from it. You get something from it. So it's also really good to have your own vision of how you want that whole situation to unfold before you get into it being actively mentored. We had a sit down with the organizers where they shared the process of organizing such an event. 
who do you have in your circle who can you call on which friend can you call on to like hey yo i have this how can we make it happen i reached out to paid we have this this and that can you come in they were ready to help i talked to ben uh, i talked to a friend of ben a friend of ben talked to ben and also ben we've been talking with him for quite a while so it was more of the people that I have networked with across the tech industry. I get to learn what will benefit or what is aligned to their interest. And I present a proposal that best fits their interest. Then we can see of an avenue which they can benefit and we can benefit. And we can make a, a project a success. While getting ready for the next session, the attendees got a chance to experience the metaverse. Recruiters from companies like Microsoft share the experience hunting for talent. Recently, last year, I moved into the data center space. Uh, Microsoft is building data centers all around because of the uptake in the Azure like uh, computer cloud platform. So we are looking to build data centers all around the world. And one of the roles that I never thought I would recruit for was a land acquisition manager for the data center. You know, when you think you're in tech, you're thinking I'm only recruiting for software role, engineering manager role. Came to realize we have people who work in the background, like real estate, like it's a, like it's a profession within Microsoft called real estate. So you can be in tech literally, but you don't have to be limited in terms of the roles that you can do. That is what I've seen with my couple of years in tech, around six years now. Yeah, so those are some of the two roles that I'm probably interested in. Success of such events boils down to finances. Uh, let me start for wine ways. Finance, that can be a challenge, especially if you're running a non-profit organization or if you don't have the financial muscle to pull everything out like and pay for it to be top tier. What you do, I made due with the list that I had. Number one, I looked at my network. Who is it? Can I reach out to to assist me to make it a success? Who can I sell my dream to? And they can say that they will be able to partner with us, that they see there is something in it and partner with us. So that's one thing. Another one is, um, let me say, I did not encounter in this event, but some events, lack of speakers or great speakers in the tech ecosystem or people don't know how to network or to reach out to uh credible uh credible someone to come and pay, speak at your events that's a challenge that most communities face or if you don't have a good network that's a challenge that people face another one is participation i think that's one of the greatest fears or disappointments that one can face you can send out an invite and people don't show up so there's always that constant fear that you have, but now you think on how can I make it, that how can I push this event to make sure people attend, and for me not to face that fear of people not honoring my invite to the event, yeah. But for this one, mostly it was finance, and I have a great team that I work with, and I have great networks, so it was a success. The event closed down with a networking session one of the most crucial sessions on most events. My vision to be happy, but in a serious note. <laughs> uh, SEA in Nairobi, so uh, we had a very serious meeting at the beginning of the year because we needed to revamp and do a lot of things as the new team. So right now I will speak of for 2024 based on the queues that we have planned. So Q2, we are looking at having a great hackathon with great uh, industry leaders in the tech ecosystem and also business-related uh, moguls in the business ecosystem that we can partner with, like Miss and Lovely, Darling, L'Oreal. They can come in on board because we want to have a hackathon that's mostly for ladies in tech. Because most times, one of the feedback we got, they don't get a lady or ladylike type of hackathon event where someone can just not be shy and be confident in saying they don't know. So that's on Q2. Q3, also the same, another event on hacking or a hackathon or something different. Then at the end of 2024, when I do a tech gala, that I am hoping it will have a great turn up. My target is I want to have Microsoft in the house, I want to have Uber in the house, I want to have Google in the house, I want to have Liquid, I want to have Big Five in the house. So that's the vision for 2024. 
Uh, for myself, I want to be a great community manager and also a product and project manager. Either of the two, that is the area of tech that I am currently pursuing uh, with Alt School Africa. Yes.